Russian forces continue to hit Ukrainian positions with heavy artillery and aviation. The enemy attempted to break the Ukrainian armed forces' defenses near Marinka in the Donetsk region. They suffered losses and retreated. According to the general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine, the enemy also tried to break through near Piske. Fierce fighting continues there now. A similar situation is in the Kharkiv direction near Husarivka. In the Slovyansk direction, the enemy uses tanks, barrel and rocket artillery to bombard the areas of Bohorodichne, Mazanivka, Husarivka, Adamivka, Kurulka, Krestishche, Solihivka, Dovhenke and Velika Komishovaha. Attempts of enemy offensive in the Delina and Bohorodichne areas, thanks to the skillful actions of our military, ended in failure and escape. Information has emerged about the liberation of the village of Dibrivne in the Kharkiv region. The Russian occupiers were pushed back by soldiers of the 93rd Holodny Yar Brigade. Thus, the enemy lost its supply roads with equipment and also lost a large number of personnel. There were several Russian military companies in the vicinity of the village. Many Russians left their equipment, in particular several dozen tanks and infantry fighting vehicles. Our servicemen are withdrawing the surviving equipment. However, before retreating, the invaders generously mined the village with anti-personnel and anti-tank mines. Ukrainian troops continue to successfully destroy Russian ammunition depots in the Kherson direction. In one day alone they managed to eliminate three of them. In connection with this, the enemy began to increase air and artillery attacks. 16 air strikes were carried out by enemy attack aircraft along the contact line in our positions and newly liberated settlements. No casualties were reported. Our rocket and artillery units, while carrying out firing missions, densely attacked the enemy air defense system and logistics points, including those with ammunition in the Kherson area. After the shelling of Turetsk in the Donetsk region on August the 4th, as a result of which eight people were killed, the prosecutor's office opened criminal proceedings under the article violation of laws and customs of war. The enemy used artillery to hit a city bus stop. At that time, people were waiting for public transport. A church and multi-story buildings were also hit. The second time it started flying, the kids and I started running. I shouted to them, baby, baby, hold the baby's hand. I ran this way, it fell around the corner over there, and the third time I looked, it hit the house. After more than two months of occupation of Mariupol by Russian troops, the body of killed residents are still lying in the streets of the city. According to Petro Andrushenko, advisor to Mariupol mayor, the citizens write complaints to the occupation authorities but they ignore it. At the intersection of Lomizova Street and Azovstal Street, two civilian corpses wrapped in plastic bags still lie in the street. The bags are being torn apart by stray dogs, which are dragging body parts around the area. The occupation authorities refuse to respond to the appeals of the residents to bury the bodies and say, let the one who needs them bury them. Petro Andrushenko, advisor to the mayor of Mariupol, on Telegram. Meanwhile, the day before in Kyiv, activists, relatives and friends of Azovstal defenders held an action in memory of the fallen Ukrainian prisoners of war in Olenivka. On Sofia Square, they staged a performance. This way, they demanded from international organizations to provide safety for the prisoners of war held by Russia. Reported by Pavel Stelmach, Oleksandr Bilov, UATV News.